Imagine it's the year 2030. Now, imagine you're out to buy a brand new car and you have two options in front of you. Option A, you could opt for a conventional looking vehicle that you can refuel at a petrol pump near you. But instead of noxious gases, it has water vapor coming out of its tailpipe. And option B, you could wait around for your electric vehicle's battery to recharge before you can drive off to your destination. At the very outset, let us be clear that as things stand today, option B is a far more likely scenario. Option A sounds too good to be true and it very well could be. But two major names from India Inc. might be betting on it as a viable alternative. For many experts, the battle for the future of green personal mobility between battery-powered electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is already over. As far as they are concerned, globally, battery-powered EVs have already won. But India could see that fight play out for longer and with interesting results. Here's why. Maruti Suzuki India makes the bulk of cars on Indian roads. This auto giant appears to have lately turned glum about the prospects of electric cars in the country. And that's a big deal. The adoption of EVs has been slow in India due to the high cost of batteries and insufficient charging infrastructure. Moreover, the country does not have lithium reserves, the majority of which are controlled by China. Addressing shareholders in the company's annual report, Maruti chairman R.C. Bhargava said that these factors made EVs a hard sell in India. He pointed out that per capita income in India was around $2,000, or about 5% of that in Europe and Japan. He also added that 95% of cars sold in the country were priced below $20,000. Instead, Bhargava said that the use of hydrogen power for mobility could be an interesting alternative for India. Consider the context in which Maruti's comments in support of hydrogen come. Mukesh Ambani has announced a $10 billion plan to scale up zero-carbon hardware in India. His conglomerate, Reliance Industries, has an ambitious goal to develop four huge gigafactories. These factories will reportedly manufacture photovoltaic modules, batteries, fuel cells and, importantly, electrolyzers to produce green hydrogen. If all these pieces come together in the years to come, Maruti could very well find a domestic supplier of green hydrogen and fuel cells to meet its needs. And, in turn, Ambani could end up with a major customer. But, what are the challenges and benefits of pursuing the hydrogen route? We have business standards Devangshu Datta with us to delve into the matter. Now, a hydrogen fuel cell is a very clean technology, the ambition is the only ambition. So if the hydrogen itself is produced by using a clean process, you have a very low carbon footprint. The um, reason why it hasn't caught on, apart from everything else, there are a couple of engineering problems. And there is the issue that uh, simply because uh, we haven't hit scale, it is not yet cost competitive compared to something like a new. The thing with hydrogen is that hydrogen is an extremely abundant, it's the most abundant element in the universe. Uh, there are two major processes by which it's done. One is by cracking chemicals like methane or ammonia. Um, that's a fairly high carbon footprint, or a fairly high uh, nitrogen footprint, both of which are bad greenhouse gases. The other element, uh, other method of doing it is what we call green hydrogen. Uh, you run a current through water and separate water into hydrogen and oxygen. If the electric power is coming from a green source, let's say solar or wind or whatever, uh, then that is extremely low power. Uh, on the engineering side, your problem is that hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe. Um, its per molecule energy is fairly good, but it's a diffuse gas. So you need to either compress it to get a sufficient quantity into a normal size fuel tank, 
all you need very large fuel tanks to carry enough hydrogen to power the vehicle for a reasonable distance. Uh, so that compression process is an industrial process which has to be worked out. And the other thing is of course safety. Hydrogen forms an explosive mixture with air or with oxygen. And uh, that's where you're getting the power. But you need to make sure that your vehicles are safe and you need to uh, minimize the chance of an explosion in case there's an accident and an electrical current flowing through the fuel tank. So, where do we go from here? If uh, India's largest passenger car maker is getting into fuel cell technology, and of course, the brands also is getting into fuel cell technology, you should be able to solve the problem with scale, and presumably, the other problems of safety and body control. As things stand today, the shift towards green mobility is being driven by battery powered electric vehicles. Consider that by the end of 2019, only 7,500 hydrogen cars had been sold globally. On the other hand, by the end of 2018, there were over 5 million plug-in electric vehicles around the world. It remains to be seen whether India will succeed in taking the hydrogen fuel cell path to zero emission cars. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.